No matter if points are gained or points are lost, there will be much to discuss. For analysis regarding tonight's Winnipeg Jets game, here are Dave Manouk, Ezra Ginsberg, and your host, Drew Mandel. The Illegal Curve post-game show starts now. Good evening, Winnipeg. Good evening, Manitoba. For all those joining us live this evening on our YouTube channel and all of our social media platforms, we say good evening, universe, and welcome to the Illegal Curve post-game show. Hope you're enjoying your Tuesday night. With Dave Manuk, with Ezra Ginsberg, I'm your host, Drew Mandel, here to break down a very eventful a high scoring. The Betway game recap might take a good solid two, two and a half hours simply on its own. But we're here to break down the Winnipeg Jets 6-5 defeat at the hands of the Vegas Golden Knights. It was billed as a battle between the top points team in the Western Conference and the team with the top points percentage in the Western Conference. And I'd say, gentlemen, that that this game, while obviously for Jets fans, is on the disappointing side of the ledger. From an entertainment standpoint, I was highly entertained by tonight's contest, and I would certainly sign up to see more games between these two teams, particularly when both squads would be at full health because tonight was plenty entertaining and there was a lot of talent out of the lineup for both teams as he good to see you dave good to see you as well certainly an entertaining contest tonight yeah pretty crazy that the jets have nine regular nine let me start that again nine losses this yes. regular season three of those a third of their losses this season are against the golden right knights right not the golden rights but i agree with you drew like i don't think anybody would have complained if there was overtime tonight, it was just fun. Like tonight was just a fun game. I was saying to Dave, like, you know, this was a game that, you know, there was no controversy. It was just two good hockey teams going back and forth, trading goals. Right. And we shouldn't be at all surprised that Shifley scored with 1.6 seconds left because all three games were one goal games. Right. And (laughs) I think where you were going with that with that drew is even though the golden Knights won tonight, I don't think you could say that the Golden Knights are, you know, head and shoulders above the Jets right now. And I'm sure we're going to talk about the injuries and, you know, the, the Golden Knights have their good fair share of injuries, but so do the Jets, right? Like Nick Ehlers is at the top of that list. He's been out. We know that for the majority of the season, but you take out a guy like Saku Manalainen, say whatever you want about Manalainen, but he's actually been a big part of this Jets team playing up until now, every single game, right? Up until his injury, I should say. Um, He had played every single game for the Jets, if I'm not mistaken, or almost every single game, right? So this was, uh, you know, you had Shifley, obviously, you know, the hat trick doesn't, uh, you know, impact the Jets' ability to win. But, um, you know, you had Stone with a couple of goals, hometown kid. um, And I believe it was his 500th point, if I'm not mistaken, right, Dave? I I thought I saw that Stone had 500 career points now. So he was really good. Let me check here. Yes, he does have 500. Just checking my updating my uh, hockey DB, refreshing it. Um, he was really good. Jonathan Marsh is so, guys. I mean, you go back to that 2017 18 season, he was a Jets killer, right? In addition to Marc Andre Fleury just standing on his head in that second, uh, pardon me, third round series. So, um, yeah, really entertaining. And you got to give the Golden Knights credit, right? Like Jack Eichel's out of the lineup, Zach White Cloud's out of the lineup, Shea Theodore, Alex Petrangelo, I think, has missed seven or eight games now. He's dealing with a, a family, an illness in the family. So, I mean, that's three of your top six defensemen. Mm-hmm. And you, like a guy like Danil Miramanov, he's not exactly a guy before the game that you were, you know, look, circling his name on the score sheet saying, like, you got to look out for this guy. But he's a really impressive defenseman. And when you've got, you know, guys like Stone, we talked about Marcia so William Carlson, Chandler Stevenson. I remember three or four years ago when the Golden Knights picked him up, Drew and I were both kind of saying, like, why didn't the Jets get this guy? For a, fifth, his- for a fifth round pick. That's all it caught. I mean, right. I, I tweeted about it, Ezzy, uh, right. during the game when Stevenson was, you know, dominant at times, when he was noticeable and the Jets largely didn't have answers for him. I tweeted about it that Chandler Stevenson for a fifth round pick is one of the most one-sided trades in recent NHL memory. And it's not talked about at all because they basically, Washington basically gave him away. And I remember if you want to go way back, I remember when the trade happened and I was doing a pre and post on, uh, on the old radio station. And I remember talking to our good friend, Rick Ralph. And I say, you know, this is a a missed opportunity for the Jets. This is back when the Jets had uh, many holes in their lineup back then to acquire a guy like Stevenson for basically nothing because a fifth round selection is almost the equivalent of an undrafted free agent. You know, you don't expect fifth round selections to necessarily translate into NHL caliber players. 
Vegas acquired him. The Jets didn't. I thought that was a mistake at the time. You can go back and if you want to find the tape and if our friends at uh, the old radio station haven't burnt down their archives, you can go back and listen to it. <laughs> Pretty sure um, there's no tape there left, Drew. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they sold the tape. The tape, uh, they get 10 cents for the tape, so they had to sell it. Oh, they're yuck at tapes now. Everybody's laughing. What, Comedy, ha <laughs> Whatever the Whatever the point is, uh, Dave M., is that, uh, you know, uh, Chandler Stevenson has been a terrific find for the Golden Knights, and he was terrific tonight for, against the Jets. They almost had no answer for him throughout the entirety of the game. He doesn't end up getting a goal, but he ends up with, I believe, four assists. And he certainly could have had a goal or a couple goals should have had at least well, one had where one he missed sure. a wide open net. Or Connor at least Hellebuck, passed it back to Stone. Right. Connor Hellebuck robbed him on a breakaway as well. I mean, there were a number of opportunities for Chandler Stevenson. Look, this was an entertaining game that the Jets were in right up until, you know, the last you know two minutes of the contest. But uh, Vegas, I thought, was, uh, you know, the speed and their transition, I thought, kept the Jets on their heels for a lot of the game, Dave. Yeah, there's no question about it. They were able to get in behind the Jets' defense a number of times to create opportunities for themselves. And that's one thing the Jets weren't able to really handle tonight, I thought. Connor mm -hmm. Hellebuck was able to make those saves, uh, it seemed. But there's definitely the, the Vegas speed was, was and the transition was was definitely catching the Jets like a, a shade slow, I would think, throughout the course of the game. And it led to a lot of good, really good chances for Vegas. So um, an interesting game, you know, and we, we talked about the opportunity for Kevin Stenland to come in the lineup. And some people so far, it seems like the comments, uh, people like what they saw. Uh, to me, when you look at Kevin Stenland, I'm not convinced mm -hmm. it's not Blake Wheeler's, you know, evil doppelganger because they look almost identical, including their numbers are very similar. So, but I mean, look, I mean, he's the fourth, the fourth line was better tonight. You know, they needed mm -hmm. to be, obviously Rick bonus was quite honest as Ezzy and I talked about in the pregame show, as we sit on my couch watching the game and in the third period that is, but, you know, the truth is that the fourth line played better. David Gustin drew a penalty um, in the game, and I thought the third line was good. And and clearly, Rick Bonus wasn't very happy. Uh, weren't I mean, we assume we'll have to find out after the game whether he sat Pierre-Luc Dubois for a couple of shifts in the third period or because Pierre-Luc Dubois has not been taking the morning skates, which are, as we know, optional. Maybe mm -hmm. he is a player who's dealing with something. So we don't know if there was some situation, whether it was a, a sitting or whether he was dealing with some sort of injury situation that he's nursing because at this time of the year, everybody's dealing with something. So uh, interesting nonetheless. And uh, of course we should probably kick off the show before we get into the recap, Drew talking about the fact that the jets made a uh, waiver wire pickup with taking Carson Coleman off of the, out of the hands of the Seattle Kraken this afternoon. So uh, you know, we were expecting them to make some sort of move. They did that paper transaction, essentially returning Kevin Stenland to the moose because he was an emergency recall. And with the emergency no longer being present, of course, they needed to return him to Manitoba, who are in Calgary. And I believe they're winning. Well, we're not going to do a Manuka Moves Minute yet, is he? But uh, anyways, they had to just kind of return him. But of course, we knew they similar. I didn't even know that that transaction happened. I must have missed that because well, when I, when I saw Stenlin recalled on the website, I was like, I thought he was already up with the Jets, but obviously, as you said, there's salary cap ramifications. Yes, there, yesterday right? they sent. So he, when he was initially called up, he was called up on a, under an emergency basis. Yeah, right. And then you, you know, if if you turn an emergency recall into a regular recall, you don't necessarily have to send him back down. But because of salary cap reasons, to Dave's point, right. yesterday when it was an off day, they sent him back down, which, of course, in right. Winnipeg doesn't mean anything. And then today they called him back up. So it's just a right. way of gaining a little bit more salary cap room. Because remember, uh, the salary, you know, every day that you have more salary cap space, it accumulates right. over yeah. the year. It's a bank account. You keep adding to it. So if you have $5 of salary cap space today and you have $5 of salary cap space tomorrow, you have $10 of salary cap space the day after that. So it's a bank account that keeps, uh, you know, generating, uh, that keeps almost generating interest, uh, depending on how much, yeah. when, when you have space. And I thought so Stenlin to, to Dave's point was, was good. And, and, St and Dave has, has watched Stenlin a lot more than both of us have drew playing for the moose, but he's been one of their best players. And, you know, I, I didn't necessarily see him, you know, going into the lineup for Janssen Fialbi, but as Dave mentioned, you know, Rick bonus was very straightforward and said, our fourth line was not good against Washington. And as we've seen guys in, you know, 27, 28 games here, I mean, Rick bonus uses, you know, he, he likes to rotate those forwards in and out a lot more than Paul Maurice did. Right. So, you know, we'll, we'll have to see if, if Stenlin stays in. My, my money would probably be on Stenlin staying in. But, I mean, mm -hmm. Janssen Fialbi, nothing against him. They just they want to have a different look there. 
And, you know, I, I don't necessarily love Dave Gustafson moving to the wing, even though I thought he had a good game tonight. And as you mentioned, drew a penalty, which I believe um, was the penalty that, that he drew was led to the Shifley goal early in the third period, if I'm not mistaken, right? So I'm not, saying, I'm not saying that, you know, Gustafson was bad on the wing. That's not at all what I'm saying. I'm just saying, Dave, I, I, I like what Gustafson does up the middle, right? Good face-off guy. He's just, that's his natural position, right? So I, I don't necessarily love that, but I, at the end of the day, I don't think that at all had an impact on, you know, the Jets losing this game by one goal. Stenland was good. He played 11 minutes. Under Paul Maurice, usually if a guy came in on the fourth line, he's playing five minutes. Yeah, no question about it. Look, I mean, if you want to, you know, it's hard to blame one individual for tonight's game. This was a 4-4 game up until a couple, well, it was a 4-3 game until some untimely penalties in the third period. So if you want to, you know, you know, it was a back and forth contest. Both teams showed up and were, were playing well. I mean, the goaltending wasn't great on either side. Uh, this was not Connor Hellebuck's best effort, even though he did have a couple of highlight real saves. But there's a couple goals there that uh, he usually makes. And, you, you know, you, you can look, break it down to the late third period power play. Look, the Jets didn't capitalize when Ben Hutton was in the box for high sticking Jansen Harkins at the 1209 mark of the third period. And the Golden Knights did capitalize, you know, before that, when uh, Wheeler was in the box uh, for the delay of game penalty that tied the game at four. And then after that, with Neil Pionk in the box, you know, with uh, just over three minutes to go in the game. Vegas scores on their two power play uh, opportunities in the third period. The Jets don't score on theirs. Well, you know, that's almost where it's almost that simple. The power play goal uh, for Vegas ties it up. And then the power play goal for Vegas wins it late in the third period. And it's a lesson in not taking costly penalties. And, you know, the Wheeler one is, you know, I hate the puck over glass. It's, you know, he's obviously not trying to do anything there. It's just a bad, unfortunate uh, rolling puck that he gets a little bit under. And I'm not going to kill a guy for that because it's certainly not deliberate. It's it, it's a mistake. He knows the situation. It's not like he was he was just trying to bank it off the off the glass and he got a little too much air underneath it. And the it's Pionk almost like one, Drew that it's almost sorry. It's almost like that penalty should have some discretion, right? Well, you yes, I would be fine with that. But you know, uh, discretion and NHL officiating doesn't usually go hand in hand. I was going to say that would be. Word, an I feel like the word discretion is not at all in the in the 100 page like rule book. Like they purposely well, did not know, put it, that word in there. It is, but only on the most random things. Like, right. you know, when a goaltender loses his helmet, then the referees get to use all the discretion they want when the guy's about to get a puck slapped off the side of his brain. But in like that if, case, like yeah, if a sure. player purposely shoots the puck over the glass, or a goaltender for that matter, but we never see yeah. that. I mean, going back, like, that's the thing. Uh, some young hockey fans, you know, if there are any watching right now, because I assume they're, you know, most of, the, most of the people watching are, you know, 30 and above, so they might not, uh, You're this talking might not, not be news Bailey's to them. But... Bailey, you're gonna you're talking to Bailey right now, Ezzy. Tell, ba- well, tell I don't know Bailey how old is Bailey. Say. I have no idea how old Bailey is. Well, Bailey's young Bailey. enough, Ezzy, to be at the. She went to the the Moose um, Project Eleven school day game, so I would imagine okay. some somewhere within. I know that's teenager, great, and, and I know we have some you know young viewers, but you know m- most of our viewers are uh, you know yes. uh, around Ezzy, our show, age or a little bit younger. But what my I'll point show you was, the analytics as back in the day, so you know this would apply to Bailey. Um, it used to be the goaltender would only get the penalty for shooting the puck over the glass, right? So, but you just never mm-hmm. see that anymore. So all I'm saying is if, if a player, a defenseman forward, whatever, shoots the puck over and it's clear that he did that to delay the game, give him a penalty. But if it's an accident, clearly was an accident, then I guess it gets into the argument about, you know, how do you know what was the intention? And then there's too much discretion, but I'm with you, Drew. It's a, it's a, it's a penalty that I hate. Yeah, totally. Uh, but you know, to you know, to Vegas's credit, they took advantage. They capitalized. Neil Pionk, you know, I, I don't love him putting himself in the position there when it's a four-all game. Later you know, to, to to be in the position where yeah. you know Phil Kessel might be able to get behind him. Don't let mm-hmm. Kessel behind you in that situation. You're you need to be more aware of where you are at in the game and, and almost game management to some extent in that play. You know he get Kessel gets behind him. Pionk takes the penalty, uh, uh, officially called high sticking there because you know Kessel was in alone. Otherwise, you just can't let Kessel behind you. And there were yeah. too many times today where the Vegas stretch game. And the stretch passes work to Vegas's advantage oftentimes in the first period. I thought the Jets cleaned that up in the second period, guys. But, yes. you know, sort of those bad habits reared their ugly head again there late in the third. And ultimately, it leads to the game-winning goal, goal off the stick of Jonathan Marshall. So. Yeah, absolutely. And that 
to me was kind of when when the Jets were struggling in this game because you know the the third period I mean the Jets were in control after Shifley scored right like they were now you know in in a position where mm-hmm. they could hold on to the lead even though they knew that Golden Knights were going to have a push but you're right Drew I mean the stretch pass was killing them right we saw that on the first goal um, by the Golden Knights and we we saw it throughout the game and the power play obviously as you mentioned did the damage in the second period but. And the Golden Knights move the puck quickly. And even without, you know, guys like Shea Theodore and Jack Eichel in the lineup, it's a very skilled, fast team. And, you know, the Jets have had trouble. Like, you know, it's, it's not a coincidence that the Golden Knights beat them three times. And the, the game, the last game in Vegas, you know, we've talked about that game many times. The Jets really had no business, you know, in overtime in that game. It was really the Connor Hellebuck show uh, for that game, which was, I don't know, a month ago, a month and a half ago at this point. Um, but, yeah, tonight, I mean... Mm-hmm. Look, I mean, Hellebuck was not good, but the Golden Knights, they they definitely deserve this win. Even though this, anybody watching this game would have said this game could have gone either way. And like Drew said, it came down to, you know, a power play, a mistake. You know, Pionk wishes he didn't take that high sticking call and the, the Golden Knights capitalized. They've gotten still with all the injuries, they've still got enough talent out there, you know, that, uh, you know, it's a power play that you have to be afraid of. So I think, you know, the Jets were definitely not happy with the game against the Capitals, but this is a game, even though you give up six goals, one of which was an empty netter, you got to be happy with, with the overall effort, even though there were parts of the game where you were pretty badly outplayed by the Golden Knights, namely the, the end of that second, uh, pardon me, end, the second half of the first period. I think overall they're, they're pretty happy that they were in a position, they were up one goal, and they it looked like they were guaranteed to get at least one point. But again, costly, as you said, costly penalties, oftentimes hurt you against the best teams in the league. And so Brett Bellamy is uh, explaining. Right. No, I'm just going to say quickly, just right. Brent is saying that what uh, Rick Bonus was saying after the game was that uh, Pierre-Luc mm-hmm. Dubois, remember we speculated why Pierre-Luc Dubois wasn't playing in the third period. Was he being benched or was there some malaise? Well, it sounds like it was the uh, latter because uh, Rick Bonus was saying that guys are, Pierre-Luc Dubois is not feeling well and uh, wasn't 100%. And obviously, it sounds like there's a few guys who are on IV. So maybe something is going through the Jets' room. I'm I not think we're going to have to put Brent on the payroll here. Like, Brent is feeding us insider <laughs> information here. I like it. Yes. Yes. I don't know how Brent is listening to the the post our post-game show and also paying attention to what's going on on the other post-game show. But but anyways, the point is that if it's... it's and Brent's, again, Brent's it's omnipresent. He can do everything. We're not making excuses here for the Jets. Just to be clear, we're just giving you facts because we were mm-hmm. uncertain as to what the reason was for Pierre-Luc Dubois not taking a couple of shifts in the third, because as you know, we saw the swap in the third period between Adam Lowry and Pierre-Luc Dubois. And obviously Pierre-Luc Dubois didn't play a couple of shifts. So it was speculated that, or there was some speculation, sorry, that, you know, maybe there was, like I said, maybe he was being benched. Uh, not that there was anything glaring that that was making you think that that was the case. But anyways, there's your explanation for the uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois. Situation. If Dubois was, is on IV right now, and it's incredible, you know, that that what he did on the, the last goal, the Shifley goal that gave him the hat trick. Because mm-hmm. that all that hard work by Dubois and then passing it to, to Shifley, like that that to me, that that goal was mainly all Dubois. So the, if he was sick and he was playing that well towards the end of the game, then wow, that's really impressive. And we'll read more from the post game uh, comments from uh, from uh, Coach Rick Bonus and any of the Jets players later on here on the Illegal Curve post game show. We say good evening to everybody who's just joining us. If you haven't already said hello, we're saying hello now. Dave Manuk's in the top right, Ezra Ginsburg's in the bottom middle. I'm your host, Drew Mandel. This is Let's Get Into the Betway Game Recap brought to you by Betway, one of the most trusted voices in sports betting, both in Canada and all around the world. And of course, the title sports. Sponsor here of the Illegal Curve post game show. Betway is the sports betting app that puts you, the customer, at the forefront with large selections of betting options and sports, as well as strong promotions and fair odds. What are you waiting for? Head on over to Betway and bet your way. Must be 19 years or older to play. Please play responsibly. The Jets open the scoring 9 22 into the first period after a good back and forth start to the game. Good pace on both sides to start the game. You sort of knew you were in for a game where there was a fair bit of talent on the ice. Mark Scheifele opens the scoring his 16th of the season. Josh Morrissey and Blake Wheeler with the assists and the Jets get a one nothing lead. It's a point shot from Josh Morrissey after a clean faceoff win by Scheifele who brings it to Wheeler who it's a set play to get it over to uh, Morrissey and his shot with a lot of traffic in front of the net gets past Aiden Hill as he. 
I really hope these teams, you know, this is an aside. We'll get into the goal here. I really hope these teams meet in the playoffs. I just got to well, say that because like, I was, this, this, go ahead. I was going to say, I agree with your sentiment and the, based on the play of both teams so far this year, the next time they're likely to be able to face each other would be a Western conference final game. That's uh, right. Western conference final series, because both these teams seem like they're not going to be uh, in a wild card position, Absolutely which means they not. play within their division. But yes. yeah, these, the, this would be a very entertaining playoff series. I don't think it would take long uh, for the dislike to uh, rear its ugly head again between these two teams. And, and like someone was pointing out in the, in the chat, Chris is talking about the conference finals here. It would be the five-year anniversary, right? It's, it's hard right. to believe that that was five years ago. But or it will be five years ago once the the playoffs roll around. But yeah, I mean, look at th- this goal is I, we have to just talk about how incredible this tip is by Shifley in front of the net. It's uh, Danil Marimanov who he's battling with in front of the net, but Shifley's kind of like falling to the side and he's just battling for position. It's just an incredible tip. Like Morrissey, that that is textbook Morrissey at this point. Like he might be the best defenseman in the NHL right now at getting those point shots through in positions that guys can tip it. Like I know Brent Burns, as you guys know, is one of my favorite all-time defensemen. He was doing that with Joe Pavelski in San Jose for years. But man, this is just an incredible tip by by Shifley. And as you mentioned, it was back and forth at that point and gave the Jets, you know, the early momentum in the first period. But to me, that's just all about just an incredible tip by Shife. It certainly was, Dave. It didn't take the Golden Knights long to tie it up, though. Two minutes and eight seconds later, 11.30 mark of the first period, a guy who I thought had a very strong game for the Vegas Golden Knights and admittedly not a guy I was familiar with prior to this game and prior to hearing his name, Daniil Miramanov gets his first. I'm not sure if it's his first he, career NHL goal. Uh, they didn't reference that on the it is. It was? Okay. It was. He doesn't, it have, was. He doesn't have an avatar on the NHL.com website. So you know, <laughs> you know, you know what, guys? And he's he's an undrafted uh, Russian defenseman. I think he's 25. But uh, yeah, that was only I think his uh, 17th know, his, game. Yeah, I was going to say 20th NHL game. But yeah, yeah, he was. I agree, Drew. He was definitely noticeable in addition to the the goal that he scored in the first. It certainly was. Uh, Riley Smith and William Carlson get the assists. Uh, Riley Smith gains the zone, Dave. He jams on the brakes. He finds Miramanov as the trailer. This isn't. Uh, very good goal it's a nice shot I mean he goes far post but this is one that Connor Hellebuck uh, saves more often than not and probably won't be thrilled about it when he looks at the video uh if he hasn't already looked at it yeah and it, and it was kind of hard to see if if perhaps uh Blake Wheeler's stick got in on that because you could kind of see there was a bit of a look from Hellebuck at Wheeler and, and you know I mean it was it was a nice play by the Golden Knights and and the Jets were just a bit sloppy they just weren't that crisp and so yeah, you don't want to see that goal beat Connor Hellebuck from that far out. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, if you're Blake Wheeler, you either have to close the gap. And, and you know, just, how many times have we seen guys stick their stick out like that ineffectively? And all you end up doing is kind of creating more chaos than it's worth. I mean, you're, if you're not getting in front, you're not going to be able to block it, and you're not going to be able to get your stick on his stick. You know, doing what he did really just kind of created a little bit of a distraction for Connor Hellebuck. And, you know, the, the goal beats him. And, and you're right, Drew, that's not one we're used to seeing beat Connor Hellebuck. So uh, you do wonder if it was, if there was some sort of tip. But uh, regardless, I think there was a breakdown from 26. And I think there was a breakdown from 37 on that goal to tie the game. Yeah, and DeMello, yeah. you know, goes in and makes a little bit of a pinch. But but you're right, Dave. I mean, Wheeler's a little bit slow getting back. Like Morrissey, Smith, Riley Smith gets b- behind Morrissey. Like Smith mm-hmm. obviously deserves a ton of credit, you know, for the work he does leading up to this goal. But you're right. I mean, Miramanov just has too much time there. And we know, like, Hellebuck's weakness. I mean, this is going back years. Like, we know the the, the book on Hellebuck is blocker side, right? Like, it's obviously easier said than done because he happens to be the best goalie in the NHL right now or at the very least the top three goalie in the NHL. I would probably put him number one. But, um, I, yeah, that was not great defensive coverage, but also not the not the best goal on Hellebuck. You know, most of the time he'll stop those. From this point on in this in the first period, the Jets were on the heels and the Golden Knights were using that stretch pass and the Jets really were discombobulated with how to defend it. And there were a number of opportunities for Vegas. I mentioned Chandler Stevenson. He comes in all alone on a breakaway, uh, you know, but. You know, Connor Hellebuck is is up to the task, making the save. Uh, Riley Smith comes in on a maybe not as clear cut of a breakaway, but another very good scoring opportunity in the first period. Connor Hellebuck makes those saves. So there was some good for Hellebuck's game, even though the numbers aren't going to look great tonight. And just when you think the Jets are going to escape the first period, 
tied up at one. Well, Mark Stone gets his 11th of the season with two seconds to go in the period. Assist to Nick Haig and Chandler Stevenson. It's sort of a bit of a, a Keystone Cops routine by the Jets on this one. Uh, Blake Wheeler looks like he either catches an edge along the boards or steps on the puck when it seemed like it was just in a harmless position. Uh, it comes out to the point, and it's a simple shot on goal. But yet Connor Halbach gives up a rebound on it where he typically wouldn't. The rebound just sort of falls at the feet of Mark Stone and nobody's there covering him. And he just slides it into the empty net uh, right before the buzzer to end the first period as he. Yeah, it's funny. T. Will, sorry, Dream Laughing, Keystone Cops, the unique code word. I don't think that uh, that's going to be the code word tonight, but it could be. But yeah, It is a Desi, but I can already tell you, two people have already guessed it. I'm not happy with you, Frosty Winnipeg. <laughs> well, hey, Frosty Winnipeg is a smart guy. I mean, he figures stuff out, right? But, you know, Drew mentioned Wheeler taking a tumble, which obviously had a, an impact on this goal. Watching that live, I kind of didn't – you mentioned stepping on the puck. Like, I thought he just caught, like, a rut or something. Like, you, like it was just it was weird. One or the it was, other. It's hard to, it hard to tell. weird because it was Lowry that, that uh, rimmed it around the boards to Wheeler, and it was just a very odd play. Um, and then obviously took him out of position, and then Lowry was, was kind of a little bit in no man's land. Pionk. Um, kind of came over to to where Wheeler was. So Pionk was a little bit out of position and Stone just got in behind, right? And and jumped on the rebound, as you mentioned. Like that rebound was just way too big. And and like, it's easy for us to sit here and say that, you know, uh, Hellebuck should have controlled that better. Um, but on the Nick Hague shot, I mean, that was just, it was right there for Mark Stone, right? Like, so Mark right. Stone goes to the net and he's not really, um, you know, accosted at all. And, you know, he buries the rebound. But yeah, what a killer. I mean, it, it's it's a goal that you hate to give up you always it doesn't really matter what the score is guys if it's a tie game or a four goal game or whatever you you hate to give up a goal you know with less than 10 seconds left so obviously you know the Jets recovered and then tied it up and then eventually took the lead but uh yeah I mean that was just a, a series of unfortunate events just Wheeler you know blowing a tire and then obviously give Hellbuck gives up too much of a rebound there yeah, absolutely. So that's how it is after 20 minutes, 2-1 for the Golden Knights. The Jets uh, recalibrate themselves, is the word I would use, in the dressing room between periods one and two, and they have a much better start uh, to the second period. They start, they're starting to take away the stretch pass that Vegas used so well. And, you know, there were some opportunities for Vegas still. We mentioned that. The Chandler Stevenson one where he is for whatever reason just unable to tuck in a puck into an empty net, uh, which seemed like it was just sitting there waiting for, uh, for it to be a goal after it squeaked through Connor Hellebuck. But no matter, Morgan Barron bangs in his own rebound uh, at the 11-16 mark of the second period, assist to Adam Lowry and Dylan Sandberg. And again, it's it's a low to high play that the Jets have really executed well with this year. Uh, it's, it's a cycle. Uh, I believe Jansen Harkins, uh, he doesn't get a point on it, but he's involved in the play to sort of keep it in deep in the Vegas end. It goes up to, low, uh, to Dylan Sandberg. He's good at getting his shot through. Adam Lowry gets a touch on it as well. And then Morgan Barron gets a couple wax before he's able to put it past Aiden Hill, Dave, to tie the game at two. Yeah, and I, and I like the way the third uh, line was rolling a little bit as you were talking and I were talking about how we thought that this was going to be the third line for this Jets club at the beginning of the season and uh, they seem to be united and 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 I, I like I liked what they all bring to the table I like Morgan Barron on that line I think Jansen Harkins in a role where he can get a little more ice time is, is gonna probably try well I mean again has the opportunity to thrive a little bit more than maybe on the fourth and you know, the fact of the matter is that they, it was exactly what the Jets needed. That the third line has been bringing, not only have they been bringing life, not only have they, you know, been a bit shut down, but the most important thing that we've talked about, probably the most important thing in addition, well, I mean, there's been so many, quote, most important things this season for the Winnipeg Jets, but probably the most important thing is the fact that the, that the third line is scoring and it's producing because the third line for too many years for this Jets club was like a fourth line in theory on a, on a really good team fourth line that could shut the other the opposition down but not produce any goals and we we've talked about it if you want to be a if you want to be a contending team you have to have a third line that can contrib contribute goals and now that's what they're doing and we're seeing it you know adam lowry is on pace for a career high in goals and assists and points assists might be tight but but for points and goals for sure you know morgan Barron is contributing and and again like i said jansen harkins right now has an opportunity to to maybe you know complement those those two guys so um you you want to see guys who are going to again be successful on the penalty kill and 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 do all that sort of thing but also
contribute. And that and and look how much energy. Again, I was in the building, boys, and there was a lot of energy when you know you're down. And it was again, Drew. You, I don't want to undersell it, but that that goal by or not goal by the the non goal close mm-hmm. goal almost goal from Vegas would have been a backbreaker a little bit. But you know the the Jets get lucky. I mean, you know, we've got all these guys in too often, more often than not. In one instance, it hurt the Jets. They were behind Hellebuck. You know, the 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 Vegas guys are behind Hellebuck. The defensemen are in front of Hellebuck, and it's not it's not a good place to be if you're trying to defend your own net. Anyways, ultimately the Jets tie the game and get a lot of energy, and the crowd explodes because they're feeling good about their club at two two. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to mention, sorry, Drew, just quickly. You know, I I still can't believe Jansen Harkins doesn't get an assist because I think it was Miramanov that he was battling with, won that battle, and then got mm. the puck back to uh, it was it was a Demello that had the no Sandberg, no Sandberg. Sandberg. Sandberg, Sandberg had the point shot right, and then it was kind of the double tip situation, right? Um, so yeah, just excellent work by by Harkins. I feel like every opportunity I have, I mean, like he just deserves you know credit for just how how hard he works. Like, honestly, like, you know, he's a guy that went down to the moose, healthy scratch. You know, now he's producing on the third line, right? So I thought he was actually one of the Jets' best forwards tonight. I mean, obviously, you know, Shifley gets the hat trick, so everyone's going to be looking back on this game and remembering that. But I think Harkins was really good on that third line with Lowry and and Barron. Yeah, I would agree that that line was uh, performed well, I thought, today. Uh, So two all halfway through the game now, late in the – and then with about uh, just under five minutes to go – in the second period, Vegas retakes the lead. Mark Stone, his 12th assist to Chandler Stevenson. And this is all Chandler Stevenson. Uh, Nate Schmidt with a bad turnover. Uh, he probably thinks he's making a relatively simple play. Chandler Stevenson knocks it out of the air. He t- corrals the puck. He comes in and Nate Schmidt is in panic mode. And Stevenson is then able to sort of slide the puck uh, underneath Schmidt, underneath Hellebuck. And Mark Stone, who just loves playing against his... Uh, hometown team the winnipeg jets mark stone being from winnipeg of course makes no mistake his second of the game is 12th of the year and you could just see nate schmidt just look on and you know in disgust at the play but it's a hell of a play by chandler stevenson as much as as it is a poor play from nate schmidt there as he yeah it absolutely was it was very un nate schmidt like right like that's just not something a veteran like him does and you know he, he of course used to play for the golden Knights, so you know that 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 hurts even more right um sure. But yeah, and, and I just wanted to mention too, it wasn't that long ago. You remember that, you know, Winnipeg Jets fans were hoping they would acquire Mark Stone, right? That was the year, if I'm not mistaken, they ended up getting Kevin Hayes, right? In, instead of I Mark it was Stone. The Paul, wasn't it the Paul Stasny year? Or was that the Paul Stasny year? I forget. I, I thought it was the, the 2018 19 season, Drew. But it's one or the other. Yeah, it's yeah. one of the, it's around that 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 time, the good old, the good old days as as we like to call them, right? But I told Dave, mm-hmm. like. I, I would I would take like Stone every single day if we're if you're picking a Canadian like World Cup team or an Olympic team like to me he's in my top six on the right wing like I just love every like he's just a great all around hockey player but back to what you said Drew like that Chandler Chandler Stevenson makes a great play right because Schmidt sees the uh, Wheeler streaking and he's trying to give him a saucer pass it just wasn't a very good pass um, and then he also makes a beautiful pass after um, you know he picks that off to Mark Stone right around the the goal line, right? So Stone comes in there and has the empty net to, to tap it in. So Stevenson deserves probably two assists on that goal. Yeah, but I'll give the Jets credit, Dave, because we're, this one, which looks like it could be a bit of a killer of a goal, the Jets don't let it kill them. 39 seconds later, Sam Gagne gets his first goal in 19 games. Another low to high play here. Uh, Brendan Dillon and Kevin Stenland with the assist here. And it's a point shot from Dillon after Stenland gets the puck in low. Then he gets it out high to Dillon. Dillon gets the shot through. And, and Sam Gagne might not have the wheels anymore, but he's still got some pretty good eye-hand coordination. Tips this one past Aiden hill into the jets credit at this point in time they bounce back real quick after giving up the bad one and it's three all late in the second period at this uh, coming at the 16 13 mark yeah you know what and it was funny because it was one of those you i was watching pregame uh the pregame warm-up skate and Mar- and sam gagne was expertly tipping something that we you know used to watch brendan lemieux do a lot uh, in practice and sam gagne was just sitting in front of the of the of the net during warmup and he's just tipping shot after shot after shot really nicely. And I was like, Oh yeah, I wonder, but now I will say one thing the jets were doing in warmup that they couldn't seem to do again in the game. They were hitting the net every time, 
And I was actually going to tweet out. I was like, now if only the Jets could hit the net as much in the game as they do during warm up. Hey, they hit the net five times, Dave. That's not bad. That is true. That is true. But they could have hit it a few more, and there were there were <laughs> well, a number of instances. The, they hit the net. They hit the they hit the goalie at least another twenty yeah. another twenty nine yeah. times. Yeah. So, I'm not I suggesting mean, otherwise, but I, I well, I would suggest if you take a look a at how many times tips Jets, tonight. I would say if you boys look at the number of times the Jets missed the net. And what, what, I mean, remember, it's not just about missing the net. You miss the net, the puck rims are out of the zone and it kills your momentum. There were a number of examples of that over the last few games, I would suggest. But anyways, so Sam Gagne was, was doing well. And I was talking to the fellas and I shouldn't say just fellas because Judy Owen, who from the CP sits beside me. And I was saying, you know, Sporty he's, Judy. Yeah. So That's he was on Twitter, uh, Sporty Judy Owen. <laughs> He was tipping, he was tipping the pucks home nicely. And I thought, well, you know, we'll see if he can do that in the game. And sure enough, beautiful tip by the veteran, his first goal, I believe in 17 games. And, Mm -hmm. and yeah, that was again, another momentum gainer, right? Because you're, you're, you felt like you were in that contest and suddenly you find yourself down, but Sam Gagne brings you back into it. And suddenly the, again, one thing I have to talk about is good energy in the building. It was a good crowd and Vegas, you know, people talk about the, the, that playoff series against the Golden Knights, it created a rivalry. And, you know, I can't tell you how many people have already said, I hate Vegas and Vegas, blah, blah, blah. And the re- the truth is, again, it's created a, something that previously we've really only seen with Minnesota and St. Louis. And again, it's what happens when you play against teams in a series. But I think that there's become a dislike between Vegas. And it's also because of all the ties, right? All the Manitobans, mm-hmm. all the Winnipeggers on in the organization, obviously from the GM all the way down. And also Paul Stastny signed there after he got traded to the Jets, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So anyways, it it was just an interesting sort of um, contest. And I thought the energy in the building was good. And I thought the fans were bringing it. And yeah, you found yourself watching a 3-3 game uh, quite quickly after that beauty tip by Sam Gagne. Drew, if I could jump in here really quickly, sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to throw this out there for the chat and and for you boys. saw Jesse Hmm. Granger, a good friend of the show, who covers the Golden Knights for the Athletic? He was saying that he thought it might have been a high stick. I didn't think it was a high stick at no, all. No, like, it wasn't. And that that that's what I was kind of curious about. Maybe he was just seeing a different angle or something like that. But I thought that was a good goal all along. Like at no point did that even cross my mind that they were going to challenge that. Challenge that. No, I'm with you. I'm with you, Ezzy. I, I when I was watching, I mean, the goal happened right below our seat in the press box, and uh, I wasn't even thinking twice about it. I did. I I didn't think. And 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 they had a face off quick. Like there was no. Uh, I don't think Vegas even mm. talked it over. To be honest with you. Well, so I, I'm not sure if Jesse was in the building or if he was watching on on a broadcast. So I don't know maybe, either. I just thought I'd throw it out yeah. there because it, it. I mean, when you have a tip like that, like a long tip, and it, yeah, it, yeah. So I agree with was, Frosty. Was, by like, the way, good goal. Love love Vegas, the city. Can't know, can't not love fan, Vegas. You, you are a big fan of Vegas, the city. I look, Except uh, for that guy that the... got mad at me that one time because I he thought I was cramping his style. I forget what casino we were in. Remember that, Dave? And that guy said I, that I told yeah. on him to the cops or something. Anyways, well, that's a that's a story for I see after dark. Yeah, I was gonna say. I think I'd like we'll, to hear that story. Yeah, they, well, as, why don't we tell the story when the Seattle uh, uh, Seahawks were celebrating? Yeah, that's right. The, we were at a club and the, the Seahawks Super came in, and we were like, "Oh, obviously, we're partying. We're the Seahawks party." No big deal. Big Daddy and Dave M were at Dre's in Vegas, and uh, you know, and the funniest Dave, part Dave was Dave is the Russell Wilson of Winnipeg. <laughs> the best part was, as I got Wilson there, doesn't play on Seattle anymore, as he. Well, at no, the time, at the though, Drew. At the time, at the I, time know. I know it's fact based, but the point is that as and I may have may or may not have gone to Dre's. And the best part was, I think we rolled in at like rolled in at like one, and they're like, uh, it, it doesn't start till like two, two thirty. And then they put us right beside the Seattle Seahawks. It's pretty cool. And they said, they said, are you two the guys from from a legal curve in Winnipeg? We're like guys, no autographs. Come on, we're try- we're just trying to relax. We're just trying to have a good time. <laughs> The Jets uh, played well in the last few minutes of the second period. They draw a penalty. Alec Martinez, the Jets' first power play opportunity of the game, takes a slashing penalty on David Gustafson with 20 seconds to go. That penalty carries over into the third period. And Mark Shifley at the 41 second mark on the power play, his 17th of the season, his second of the game with an assist to Kyle Connor on a beautiful one timer. Uh, give the Jets the 4 3 lead. The Jets battle back. They had that 1 0 lead, and then they finally have retaken the lead early in the third period with this goal by Shifley. And this is just a really a world class shot on a great pass from Kyle Connor on the power play to just make it all happen, Ezzy. 
Yeah, we and, and the thing is, I, I, we haven't really seen, like over the years, we haven't really seen Shifley and Connor connect on the power play. So that's what I thought was really uh, unique about this goal. Obviously, I'm just being an idiot, but... <laughs> yeah, I mean, there, there's not there's not much more you can say here, right? Like the Jets were moving the puck really well. Still, I, I mentioned this last uh, post game that I did, or maybe it was the Saturday morning show. I just love Perfetti on the power play, but this is just classic, like you know, Shifley, you know, sweeping down on his on his knees there, and just a beauty one timer. Mm-hmm. Um, and we got to give the Gus Bus credit for again drawing that penalty at the end of the second period, which obviously gave the Jets the power play. Yeah, it gives the Jets the power play, but you know the special teams end up costing the Jets, and it's the penalty kill in particular, and it's not something that we're used to saying this year, Dave, because the penalty kill has been so good, although that's now two straight games that they've given up uh, uh, pen- power play markers. Uh, it's two in a row from uh, Jonathan Marcheseau. This, the, the goals are identical. Marcheseau from Miramanov and Stevenson at 9.38 to tie the game. That's the one with Wheeler in the box for the puck over the glass penalty. And then uh, eight minutes and six seconds later, after the Jets fail to capitalize on a, on a power play, Marsh, so from Miramanov and Stevenson, they move the puck around. The first one is a good shot by Marsh, so a good solid wrist shot. It looks like it beats Connor Hellebuck short side. And the second one is just a one timer marshall so doesn't get the headlines in vegas anymore it's been a few years since uh you know since uh, the florida panthers gifted uh vegas Mar- marshall so and riley smith but marshall so can still play hockey his four, 13th and 14th of the year uh come in late in the third period to give the golden knights uh the eventual well this made it what uh five four and it's the game winning goal there uh in the six five win there dave yeah i mean look it, it's it's a you knew when when Neil Pionk took that penalty against um, Phil Castle that you were yeah. in a situation where, I mean, look, you just can't do that. You can't allow. I mean, you've got it's just sloppy. It's just not paying attention to, you know, being aware. I mean, look, it's a four all game, and I mean, you're gonna you're gonna let Phil Castle, who, quite honestly, I didn't even notice throughout the course of the game, and maybe they showed him a little bit more on the broadcast, but by being there live, like I didn't think Phil Castle did anything other than to be honest you draw the penalty that allowed vegas to score but really i didn't notice phil kessel other than yakking it up with with blake wheeler uh during warm-up but he wasn't noticeable to me at least throughout the course of that game and then you allow him to get in behind you you take a a penalty because you're not moving i didn't think neil pionk had a particularly good game and i thought that uh it's just unfortunate it's not it's not a it's not something a good team does, right? Like a good team shouldn't be, let's to quote a Druism, not having the attention to detail in a in, in late in the game. I mean, it's it's under five minutes to go in a third period of a tie game, and you're allowing mm-hmm. not only are you allowing him to get behind you, but then you're taking a penalty and you're putting your team behind the eight ball. And so, you know, it's an unfortunate circumstance for Winnipeg, and and now you're finding yourself having to chase, and and it's deflating. Right, it's deflating because you fought back to get into the game, and you know now suddenly you're chasing it again, and it's late in the game, and so that's that's a tough position for the Jets to be in, and it's not impossible, of course, but it's just not an ideal one given uh, the fact that Vegas is still, despite all the injuries, still a pretty good team. Can we go back to that to Marchessault's first goal for a second, though? The goal that tied it up for all. Is there Thanks. any chance that that went off of Sandberg's skate? Because originally, like that was a low wrist shot. And the way Sandberg looked up to the sky, I don't know if you guys were were thinking about that. I just watched it again on the replay. Like that that was one goal that I thought that well, not one goal, probably uh, the the second or third goal that I thought Hellebuck should have stopped because it was just to me like it wasn't like a close range shot. It wasn't the hardest wrist mm-hmm. shot. I, I I originally when I was watching it here thought it might have gone off of a stick or something. It was Stone and Sandberg in front of the net. Anyways, I don't know if anybody in the chat noticed that as well, but. Um, I thought that might have gone off of Sandberg's skate just the way he reacted after it went in. But yeah, it, it, look, it, it's certainly not a, a typical goal that Connor Hellebuck gives up, and there were a few of them in tonight's game. Uh, you know, the 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 winning goal is is a much more sort of usual power play goal to get scored on where the puck is cycling around and it's a one timer and Marsha so can fire the puck like nobody's business. And you very well might be right as be, because if, if, you know, when, when a player looks up like that, it often is an indicator that it maybe deflects off of them. And the player certainly knows better than anyone else. It, when a puck ticks off them, even how minutely the, the, the redirection might be, it impacts the, uh, the goaltender. So it's and also true, Drew, well. there was just, it wasn't, 
wasn't like a lot of traffic, right? Like it wasn't Hellebuck was like, he wasn't fighting through traffic to see it. Right. And I don't know if it was just like, you know, he wasn't set properly. It was just, yeah, it was, it was a goal that you just don't expect Hellebuck to, to let in, especially the way he's been playing lately. Yeah, certainly. Uh, you, you don't expect him to let in any goals in the way he's been playing lately. Uh, the Golden Knights make it 6-4, and this one is actually uh, the game-winning goal. Thank you to uh, Maul in the chat for correcting me, because uh, uh, it's William Carlson into the empty net, Riley Smith and Braden McNabb with the assists, because Shifley scores with one second to go. Uh, it's the hat-trick goal for Mark Shifley, giving him 18 on the year, Pierre-Luc Dubois and Brendan Dillon with the assists. It's nice to get a hat-trick. It's nice on the score sheet. It gets you closer to potentially being in the running for 50 goals this year but ultimately this was as meaningless a goal as they come uh to make it 6-5 with one second to go in the game uh you know maybe if there was eight seconds uh you can go back to who was that darren quint uh back in the day who scored uh, two goals yeah. yeah thank you two goals in eight seconds for jets 1.0 against uh the edmonton oilers and joaquin gage if i'm if i'm not mistaken wow I think joaquin gage was a net for the oilers back then i definitely but, uh, did not remember that drew joaquin gage does the uh does uh, a show with uh, our good friend Dustin Nielsen, TSN 1260. They have a show with uh, Zach Cassian. Okay, well, there you go. I oh, sorry, pardon me, not show. Zach Cassian. Uh, Matt Cassian? Zach Cassian plays for the Coyotes. What am I talking yeah, about? Matt, you, you would think that Zach Cassian should have retired by now, but yeah. don't worry. The Coyotes Walking are... Age does a podcast with Dustin Nielsen, who you, okay. you've heard to doing uh, play-by-play for the CFL on TSN. There you go. As he, there you go. I didn't think that this conversation would somehow veer towards the Joaquin, <laughs> veer towards Joaquin Gage, but you never know where we're going to go here on the illegal curve post game show. A six four, pardon me, six five final. The Golden. Yeah, don't Knights ignore that sh- that Shifley yeah. hat trick, Drew. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Six five Golden Knights final. With it, the Jets drop to 18 9 and one second straight loss in regulation. Hasn't happened very much for the Jets this season at all. Only the second time this year that they've dropped two games in a row. They'll look to get back in the win column on Thursday against the division rival Nashville Predators, a team that is struggling. Uh, the Predators losing on home ice tonight to the Edmonton Oilers, Dave. Yeah, and just, again, a little bit of an update. The Jets have canceled practice because of the bug that's currently going through their room. So they were supposed to practice tomorrow at noon. They have instead decided to cancel practice. So there will be no skate tomorrow, just trying to quash the uh, illness that is currently uh, running through. And I, again, like I said, you can you can say that's an excuse. It is just the reality of what Rick Bonus is, has just said. So take the head coach of the Winnipeg Jets at uh, whatever face value you want to give him. But that is the... Uh, that is the reality for tomorrow. So no, no practice for the Jets tomorrow um, as they try and allow that that flu bug to uh, work its way out of the room. They got to get some hydrochloroquine in the dressing room, boys. <laughs> well, anyway, well, don't worry. It's is... a good thing. It's not like it's a busy time in the year. It's not like they have a lot of games in a very short window or anything that they're in the midst of. Lots of rest time between now and, and Christmas. So certainly not something like yeah. seven games in the next ten days or whatever. Well, ridiculous. I was going to say that too, Drew. I was going to be like, even like, even though you know, that's, that's a reason to cancel practice. Like you, you could argue that they should not have a practice just with all the games they have lately. Right. But mm-hmm. hopefully it yeah. helps out and a, a couple of guys will you know get a day's rest. and will be good to go on Thursday night. Yeah, exactly. the Jets, like you said, next in action on Thursday night post game back here, 945 PM on Thursday. When we come back, the unique code word of the day, we announce who's won the most recent uh, merchandise contest. He or she uh, is in the chat. I can see that or I saw them. So you the might want to stick around. That's all I'm saying. Don't stick go around. Anywhere. And also, if you've missed it, another additional grand prize that we're going to start handing out once a month that you won't want to miss this one. You'll want to hear this news that's coming up next here on the Illegal Curve post game show. Dave Manuk's in the top right. Ezra Ginsburg's in the bottom middle. I'm your host, Drew Mandel. Betway presents the Illegal Curve post game show live on YouTube and all of our social media platforms. Jerry Seinfeld, Chris Rock, Jon Stewart, Dennis Miller, Brad Garrett, the biggest acts and all the up-and-comers. They've all made their mark at Rumors Comedy Club, North America's longest-running independent comedy club. Rumors has kept Winnipeg laughing for over 25 years. When was the last time you laughed out loud? Make it a great night out with friends or book your office or birthday party, even a fundraising event at Rumors. Get all the details and dates on upcoming shows at RumorsComedyClub.com. He winds up. 
Oh, looks like Ezzy took that one right in the choppers. A blistering fast puck hurts like H-E double hockey sticks. That's why I let the pros at Linden Market Dental Center turn my yow into wow. Get your brilliant smile back with state-of-the-art restorative and cosmetic dentistry from real pros. And remember, always wear a mouth guard. Now that's solid on ice advice. Learn more at LindenMarketDentalCenter.com. Creating smiles for life. Whoa, Ezzy, everything okay? You look stressed. Of course I'm stressed. We're moving, the house is upside down, the kids failed miserably at packing the fine china, and my life is in chaos. Chaos! Yes, that does sound like a problem. What am I going to do? Ezzy, relax. Rolly's transfer moving and storage is the answer. With 60 years of experience in moving Manitobans and a track record of exemplary customer service, one call to Rollies and your stress is gone. No job is too big or too small. Just visit Rollies.com and they will take it from there. Thanks, Dave. And thank you, Rollies Transfer Moving and Storage, online at Rollies.com. Dave, my man, why are you in the car already? It's hours until game time. Uh, Drew, it's because I'm stressed out right now, driving around downtown Winnipeg, looking for a parking spot, and I'm not finding one. I've lost Ginsburg. I don't even know where that guy is right now. Dave, haven't I taught you anything? Do what I do. Pre-book your entire month's worth of game day parking with the Grid Park app. It's super easy to use and saves me both time and stress. Well, Drew, I'm not independently wealthy like you are. So I'm sorry that I don't have millions of dollars to pre-book my parking month in advance. What's that going to cost you? $25? How about five bucks? Come on, five dollars? No way. Five bucks. I'm not telling you a lie. And our listeners can get a free park with the new special promo code, Illegal Curve. Guess what? There's more. Come on. There's more, Drew. You're lying to me. What more could there be? Grid Park now has underground parking, so my car can stay warm during the game. So wait a second. Wait a second. All, All the driving around I do, looking for parking, minus 40. You're telling me I could be toasty warm in a car after the hockey game. That's exactly what I'm telling you. Underground parking. Just download the Grid Park app. That's G R Y D Park and use the code Illegal Curve. All one word. You'll park for free your first time. Hi, it's Drew from Illegal Curve here. Selling your home can be stressful, but it wasn't for me. Thanks to my friends at Zapia Group Realty, they made the process so easy. My home sold within 48 hours and with multiple offers. Zapia Group Realty took care of everything with their exquisite customer service and attention to detail. If you want to sell your home for more in less time, get started by talking to Frank and Mauro Zapia of Zapia Group Realty. Online at zapiagroup.com. For three generations and over 80 years, Tough Duck has been making apparel that works and plays as hard as the people who wear it. From jackets to work boots and everything in between, Tough Duck's clothing can handle the harshest environments, even the Illegal Curve Hockey Show. Work to live, live to play. Visit toughduck.com. 20 minutes before the top of the hour, you're back with the Illegal Curve post-game show. We're live on our YouTube channel. We're live on all of our social media platforms. Drew Mandel, Dave Manuk, Ezra Ginsburg with you, breaking down the Jets' 6-5 defeat at the hands of the Vegas Golden Knights on this Tuesday night. We remind you, Thursday night, divisional rival game, the Jets and the Nashville Predators back here on our YouTube channel, 9.45 p.m., give or take a couple minutes. Then it's going to be a busy Illegal Curve weekend because they're all busy Illegal Curve weekends. Saturday morning, 9 a.m. back here on our YouTube channel. Then a late night, Illegal Curve after dark, probably close to midnight on Saturday night after the Jets and the Vancouver Canucks. And then because rest is for the week, Sunday evening, again, after my Hanukkah party, so I'll be filled with latkes, let me tell you, folks. uh, We're going to talk about the Jets and the Seattle Kraken. I think that's a six o'clock puck drop, if I'm not mistaken, on uh, Sunday, or is it seven o'clock? Dave M, you know what? uh, No, I think it's seven. Is it? I thought it was. I was going to say seven. Okay. Which game are you guys talking about? On Sunday. Sunday game. Wasn't it seven? Uh, I don't know. 
Uh, who knows? There's here, a million. There's, seven o'clock. I got it. Seven o'clock. I got it seven. My phone here. Seven o'clock. So nine forty-five post game will be. On Guys, I, I just keep myself focused on. Pacific, you were right about that. I, I, I just yeah. focus on the game at hand, boys. I can't think about that many games down the. Uh, Perpe diem, game. right, Dave? Aaron. Yeah. <laughs> Live in the Something moment. Like that. Uh, so we were talking about. We mentioned that the Jets have a flu bug running through their locker room. Number of guys on IV, things of that nature, uh, and they made a uh, waiver claim earlier today. Again, not an overwhelming surprise because you, we know about the injuries the Jets have suffered with their forward group and they're thin up front with all the injuries. We mentioned them before, uh, Madelinen, Appleton, Ehlers, etc. They acquired Carson Kuhlman. And by the way, no update. Uh, Rick Bonus was asked for an update uh, during the morning availability as to the, the timelines for both Madelinen and um, uh Stanley, Stanley, and he mm-hmm. just he said it was interesting. I he said Mikey three. Mikey McIntyre said one month for each. Well, yeah, and, and Rick Bonus actually said three to four weeks, but he basically said three to four weeks to get them to the point where they're rehabbing or something like that. So, like, it's going to be a while. Not anytime soon is, is is basically what that boils down to. But here's what Rick Bonus had to say about Carson Kuhlman, who the Jets claimed off of waivers from the Seattle Kraken, another one of those Minnesota Duluth Bulldogs. So he'll feel at home with some of the Jets players that are already uh, repping the uh, Bulldogs colors uh, from their college days. Quote, I don't know a lot, whole lot about him. I hear great things about his skating and his compete and everything else. He's not getting in until late tomorrow night. So we'll figure out his role as we go along. So Carson Kuhlman, a bit of a, a blank uh, a blank sheet as it comes to Rick Bonus. So he's got an opportunity to impress the Winnipeg Jets head coach. And we've known, we've seen from Bonus so far, it's a very much a meritocracy when it comes to sort of the bottom of the Jets lineup. You play well, you do the things you're supposed to do, you do your job, to quote the Belichickism as I, that I talked about on a previous postgame show, and you might very well stay in the lineup. So something for him. Uh, to think about as he's trying to further establish himself uh, as an NHL regular, I would say. Uh, as a, you've seen some of Carson Kuhlman a little bit in, in glimpses well, he's a good here friend, and there. He's a good friend of the show. Like For those who, who don't remember this, some of the really old school IC viewers will, will remember this, but when we were at the draft in 2013 in uh, Newark, mm-hmm. but yeah. we did the show um, in New York because obviously it's close, right? Um, our, our friends Kyle and Tom of Veritas Hockey, they represent Carson Kuhlman. He, had, he didn't end up getting drafted that year, um, but Dave documented this you know, on the, on the website. He was actually invited to Winnipeg Jets development camp. I'm not sure if that was 2014, 2015. I'd have to go back and look. Um, but he, he, so that he has been on the Jets' radar. Um, and you know, he, he had his most success with the Bruins, if you remember, kind of 2017, 2018, yeah. 19. He, played, he was playing in the playoffs. He was kind of one of those guys that would come in and out of the lineup. But going back to what you said, Drew, I mean, when you're talking about Ehlers and Manalainen and Appleton, right wing, like the Jets are really thin on right wing. And that's that's why they made the move, because Manalainen's not going to just miss a game or two games. It seems like, you know, he could be out for, you know, at least a couple of weeks, but maybe even longer, maybe four weeks, six weeks. We just don't know. I mean, you saw him right. you know, clutching his, his shoulder area, right? So that did not look good. But yeah, Coolman is a guy that, you know, he's going to be a third, fourth line guy. And, mm-hmm. you know, he's going to give you an honest effort. He obviously, you know, isn't a guy that you're expecting to score a lot of goals, even though he has a decent scoring touch. But this is a guy that's just carved out a nice NHL career for a guy who, who's been undrafted. He's been in and out of the, the Kraken lineup a little bit. Um, but yeah, just a, a great story, like a guy that we had on the show can't remember the last time we had him on the show 1290. He was with the Bruins, but just a, a really nice guy, um, hard worker. So I think, you know, it's just a good good depth add for the Jets. It certainly would be that. Uh, here's some more from Rick Bonus about today's game uh, and some of the X's and O's, this courtesy of Murata Tesh of The Athletic. Rick Bonus on the X's and O's of being too slow and pressuring Vegas uh, with the puck. Quote, we're a little off on losing that F3. That's the third forward. Yeah, we are. We're giving them too much time, just a little bit out of sync with the D pinching when they shouldn't and the forward should be there. Everything revolves around that F3 being high, high in the zone. Sometimes he's just getting caught too low and then it's a foot race. We've really got to focus on getting that guy, getting him much higher. And that's what we did in the second and third period. And that's why you saw the Jets play, I would say, improve in the second and third period, at least at five on five. Never mind the power play opportunities. That's where sort of the game uh, got to be a little bit more even and the Jets weren't chasing and they weren't on their heels and they and Vegas was 
wasn't able to use their stretch pass as well, of course, until, uh, you know, Phil Kessel gets behind Neil Pionk and that takes the penalty and that leads to the uh, game winning goal late in the third period. But you can see, you know, there's always times where a coach has to coach and a coach has to remind and certainly the video uh, I think Matt Prefontaine and the video crew probably had some video queued up and ready to go between period one and period two for the Jets, Dave. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think there's any question about that, Drew. And and look, there was a lot of things that they're going to have to learn because the Jets, the Jets weren't able to really contain Vegas's, you know, the stretch pass and the transition. And as a result, they Vegas was able to create opportunities, and Vegas was just faster than Winnipeg ultimately. That's what I would say. Like I think that Vegas was just the quicker of the two teams, and. Look, it's entirely possible that the Jets were a fraction slow because they're dealing with an illness. And mm-hmm. I guess we'll see what happens on Thursday when they're up against Nashville. They can still have it in the room. We'll see what happens, you know, the next couple of games after that. So, I mean, it's it's one game and the Jets haven't looked like a slow team throughout the course of the year, which is why I'm more inclined. I'm not here to look for excuses for the Winnipeg Jets. I don't work for the Winnipeg Jets. I work for you people in the chat. I work for... As he and Drew. So, I mean, that's about, those are the only people we hear we work for, but look, I mean, ultimately we're just trying to give our insight and I would look at that and say, well, that's, you have to take into every, into account all the things that are factors, you know, how did the jets play? How did the jets, you know, uh, well, and adapt? the golden Knights are also a very good team, right? Even without Eichel and Theodore and Petrangelo exactly. and, 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 uh, the pride Essie, of they've won 12 the games. nation, Zach Whitecloud, right? Like Essie, they're, they're, 12... they're one of the best teams in the league. They're 12, two and one, and now 13, two and one on the road. They're one of the best teams yep. on the road. So and have they scored three or more goals in like all of those games or almost all of those games? Like, well, and, 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 and I believe also they've scored the least amount of goals at home. I saw this from Jesse Granger, which is super weird. They average four goals a game on the road, but they only average like two and a half goals or something like that. Dave yeah. at home, just, just yeah. a, a very weird statistic. It's kind of hard to, to really reconcile that. <laughs> they must be partying with the Seattle Seahawks, like you boys are, like you yeah, boys. Exactly. Yeah. Once upon a time, that, that once must once be. Their time. I think they're uh, yeah, partying with Little John. Let's, let's just <laughs> say, let's say, let's just say, Big Daddy was uh, he was he was ripping it up on the dance floor. <laughs> I can't. I Please tell me you not. have. Dave M, I know you oh, have I've got video. pictures. I know oh, I've got. I was yeah, not you, on the you, dance you, floor. You, I don't you, go on dance floors unless it's Drew's wedding in Kentucky. Dave I've got the, I've got the video. video evidence to the contrary. We, we, we'd like to see it. We're not above uh, slipping some of those video clips in here on the <laughs> illegal curve post game show. Uh, let's give away some contest winners. Ezzy, you got a tough duck, hardest hitting comment for me on tonight's uh, Jets uh, Vegas Golden Knights post game show. Yeah, absolutely. As always, thanks for all the comments. We absolutely love each and every one of you commenting. We're going to give it to flying Dukes. We've posted some of his comments or I shouldn't say, I don't know if it's a, he it could be a, he or a she, um, but I like this comment, face-offs, takeaways, hits all in Jets' favor, which obviously was not the case against uh, Washington. One of the stupid penalties uh, where we hung Helio to dry category two. So, I mean, really, look at, for all the analysis and all the talk about F3 and stretch passes and everything like that, this game was determined on a power play. Two power plays, in fact, as Drew documented with Jonathan Marshall so doing the damage, right? So, um, you know, another great game and... You know, I think most people, if the Jets and Golden Knights end up playing in the Western Conference Final, I think most people are going to expect the series to go six or seven games. Let's just put it that way. So hopefully that ends up happening. So Flying Dukes, great name, by the way. Send, send me an email, Ezra at IllegalCurve.com or slide into my DMs at ICSEG on Twitter. And Tough Duck will ship out a toque to you. And you're going to need that because apparently it's supposed to snow 20 centimeters overnight. Congratulations to Flying Dukes, the winner of tonight's Tough Duck Hardest Hitting Comment. Your next opportunity, of course, Thursday night, where you can win a toque courtesy of our friends at Tough Duck just for participating in the live chat that we bring to you on each and every edition of the Illegal Curve post-game show. Illegal Curve Merchandise Contest. If you want to enter the Illegal Curve Merchandise Contest, I'll do the quick rundown of how you do that. You go to the drop-down arrow in the show description here on our YouTube channel. Hit that drop down arrow. You'll see a link to the contest page. Click that link. The contest page will open up. There's a number of different tasks that you can complete. The more tasks you complete, the more chances you, uh, more ballots, more entries you get into the merchandise contest. It's that simple. If you can't find the link on the YouTube page, go to our website, illegalcurve.com. 
basically open up any article on that fine page of that fine website, click the link there. You'll see all the different things you can do that you can earn ballots and earn entries into the illegal curve merchandise. Contest. Can we add shovel my sidewalk or my front steps? Can we add that for points? Cause I'll give someone hundred points for that. If it does end up snowing 20 centimeters. Uh, we cannot, but that's a nice, uh, generous offer from you. Anyways, instead, you can just give people a hundred dollars, and they'll do that for you. There are, you know, there are. Sure, I'm not independently can... wealthy like you are. <laughs> well, you know, like Grid Park, uh, I, you know, I, I, I guess I actually don't have a shovel surface. I, I enjoy shoveling. I can do that. I can do that one myself. My parking, I got, I got disposable income galore for for parking. Clearly, mm-hmm. just because you've got the Grid Park app, that's why you're independently right. wealthy. Exactly. More importantly, though, I, I, I'm, I'm very impressed with the number of people who, uh, who went and figured out the unique code word. And I don't know, I wasn't paying attention completely to the, to the chat, so I don't know if Frosty or Greg gave it away to anybody else but we now have two more including last night's winner or two nights ago winner kenny's water bottle isn't on the action by the way kenny didn't respond to my email i emailed you uh about your win well he might not have gotten my Kenny's email, been cause... doing a lot of winning lately yes oh as he do wait winner. maybe if yeah like well the boston we gotta... bruins right now so anyway so we got four people who guessed a unique code word so congr- oh and alan i should have known alan of course was one of the four as well well done alan and just a, a little uh, heads up, a little new thing we've got to announce uh, as part of the Illegal Curve contest is that we are going to be giving away tickets to an NHL game of your choice. So there will be a grand prize winner at the end of every month. So mm-hmm. we're going to start this one in about mid-December, which is unusual, but that's fine because there's so many games in December. It'll feel like a normal month, even though we're starting midpoint. And you can basically, if you win, you can choose any NHL game you'd like to go to and IC is going to provide you with two tickets to that game. So uh, make sure you get in your 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 entries. And once you're entered to win, we'll do again to win the Jets authentic gear, and then two tickets to an NHL game of your choice for the following month. So if you win in December, you get to pick a game in January. If you win in January, you pick a game in February. In February, March, and then we end March, April. And I'm not going to say we're going to have playoff tickets because we're not there yet. But if we keep on, if this keeps on rolling, we may have playoff tickets. But for right now, grand prize will be two tickets to an NHL game of your choice uh, here, the courtesy of the Illegal Curve Contest. And just to clarify, in any city. So that's not, the, I mean, if you, you know, Well, you didn't need to really be, Drew, you didn't need to get all crazy. And, and I, I was kind of trying to let that be said without being, without being explicitly well, said. So let's just saying. keep it as, well, we don't really need to. We'll just leave okay. it as. You can go to an NHL game of your choice. Drew, Dave That's, is the contest master. Yeah, you I was like, I was like, there's a reason why with... we don't need you interjecting, Drew. And I'm gonna have to go back and now cut that out. So everybody who just heard what Mindell said, ignore it, erase it from your memory banks. I need one of those from men, I, men and men in black. I'll just like erase everybody's memory. Just remember, two tickets to an NHL game of your choice. We're just gonna start calling Dave Wayne Cox. <laughs> Hey, Bob Barker he was... just turned Bob Barker just turned ninety nine. So maybe we should give a throw that. to uh, Bob Barker. Always important. Uh, always. Hey, did you hear what he got for his 99th birthday, Dave? A new car. <laughs> oh, I thought he got it. A... <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done, Mr. Ginsburg. Anyway, available you need to fill in at rumors anytime, Drew. And for the okay, record, it, for the record, for everyone who's asking, no air. There's no airfare. I don't know. Don't listen to Mindell. All you're getting from IC, I mean, Airfare. it's not all you're getting. You're getting two tickets for the NHL game. We work for WestJet. Yeah, I, exactly. So just Fine. focus on hey, on two tickets. Don't listen to me. You people never usually listen to me, so don't listen <laughs> yeah. to me. All of a sudden, you're starting to listen to me. What's wrong with all of you? Don't listen to me. I know I don't know what I'm talking about, and most people usually say that. So reiterate that that I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> that said. I do know that the unique code word for the illegal curve contest after tonight's Golden Knights Jets game is Red Rock Canyon. If yes. you've been to the Vegas area and maybe you've visited Red Rock Canyon, it is quite beautiful. That put that into the unique code for the legal curve contest. Extra entry as a result. Red Rock Canyon, all one word, all capitalized, is your unique code word for the illegal curve contest for tonight's Jets Golden Knights game. So enter that word now and get those bonus entries, get extra entries. You'll be entered into the merchandise contest where you can win authentic Winnipeg Jets gear, just like our latest winner. Congratulations to Phyllis Phyllis Lowen. Awesome. 
Phyllis, who was, of course, awesome. always in the chat, had always telling people, always telling people to to hit the like button, yes. always keeping people respectful. I'm very yes. close to making Phyllis a moderator in the chat, <laughs> along with Frosty, along with Bailey, along with Alan. Phyllis Alan. is a big deal. Yeah. For those who so, don't know, Phyllis is a huge deal in the IC post game shows. She's awesome. No, I would suggest that everybody is the well, no, uh, everybody, but, in this community. But, but the point is, Phyllis just said, no way me. Yes, Phyllis, way you. Very way you. So Phyllis is the big winner. Uh, well done. Looks and, like Dave's uh, going to be driving out to Morton, Drew. Yeah, I don't know. Is that where Phyllis is? Is Phyllis in Morton? Not so. I'm like, I'm not sure where you came up with that one. Yeah, I don't know where I actually, I'm not sure. I actually don't think you're right. Actually, as I think that you're actually wrong, but no, I mean, we're not going to just, we're not going to disclose where people live as E because that's not what we do on this show. Just like, boy, I got to control you. Well, I and didn't give out Phyllis's Adele. address. I mean, no, Morton, actually, actually, as, actually, no, I, actually, another thing, but I think as he is right. I think she is in Morton. There as we go. Right. Thank you. I mean, I pay attention, especially yes. when it's a fine town in the Pemina Valley region, like Morton. Well done, Ginsburg. Anyways, the point is, congr- more importantly, though, well done, Phyllis. Congratulations. Thank you very much for participating. We always appreciate everything you bring to the chat. So, uh, and look, if you didn't win tonight, guess what? There's two more chance. There's two more. There's two more chances to win like the next three days. So uh, you keep getting yeah. those <laughs> entries in. I'm adding lots of uh, new things. New things you can well, just wait till Drew starts throwing out airfare, Dave. Then we're really oh, going to well, get into a just, just a give people whatever here. they want. Just give them anything. So, anyways, congratulations, Phyllis. Thank you for everyone who participates. And again, your chance will come soon enough to win. Lisa, she's in the chat. She won just recently. So, uh, just you know, Kenny's water bottle. It's your chance. Everyone, like I said, we've got the machine is on. There's lots of stuff to give away. We're giving away toques. We're giving away authentic jet gear. We're giving away trips according to Mandel. I mean, God knows what we're giving away, but we're giving away lots on the Illegal Curve Hockey Show. So just make sure you're subscribing, you're paying attention, and, you know, leave it a nice little comment on our uh, iTunes. That would be nice as well. There you go. That is uh, all you have to do. That's what we ask of you, and we give you all these prizes in return. Next time that you can uh, potentially win will be Thursday night, 9.45, after the Jets and the Predators. The Jets hope that the losing streak doesn't extend to three games. They want to get on the right side of the ledger, and they'll do so, or they'll try and do so, in a battle against their division rival, Nashville Predators, on Thursday night. As for tonight, a 6-5 defeat of the Jets at the hands of the Vegas Golden Knights. Before we leave you on this Thursday, Tuesday night, we say a big thank you to all the sponsors of Illegal Curve who make the post-game show, the Saturday show, and the website a possibility. Our friends at Rumors Restaurant and Comedy Club, Ryan Belleville in town at Rumors. Oh, a couple shows already sold out but you can get your tickets at rumorscomedyclub.com uh, some tickets available for wednesday and thursday and i believe the late show friday and most everything else is already sold out our friends at linden market dental center zapia group realty betway they're the official sponsor of the illegal curve post game show tough duck boston pizza seagram's Rollies transfer grid park and the keg support these fine businesses because of their continued support of illegal curve hockey big thanks to all of you for joining us on this tuesday night if put you on your antlers so. it's time Smack. for the manuk moose minute on the illegal curve hockey show <laughs> oh yeah come on okay that was amazing how are you gonna the moose are up three one drew how are you gonna yeah like i think, I think they're up three one they won four one and i completely there forgot that they played today it's tuesday that's i'm not right. used to the moose playing on tuesday well Make that's fair minute. drew that's fair, but the reality is I give the people what they want. Snuck in want, a Manuk Moose Minute. Love and the it. people want a Manuk Moose Minute to be snuck in there just before. I mean, look, Drew, people are upset the Jets lost, but you know what? Sometimes sometimes there's a little there's a little uh, glimmer of hope. There's some excitement in the in the in the air. And the uh, Manitoba Moose, after you know, splitting the series to start the road trip in Abbotsford, headed off to Calgary for the very first time ever to take on the Wranglers. Of course, they played the Wranglers here in Winnipeg, but they haven't played in Calgary. So uh, the Moose, still without Vili Hainola, dealing with an illness. Obviously, Chaz Lucius went to the World Junior Camp. He was He's still injured, but he's been there skating. Brad Lambert, he probably will be going to the finished camp for the World Juniors, but he still was in the lineup tonight. And of course, uh, without Kevin Stenlin, who was recalled up to the Jets. So the Moose uh, started the game down one nothing. Now, I'm not going to pretend like I watched the game. I'm going to have to go back and watch all the highlights and get caught up. But we still have to mention, Drew, that the Manitoba Moose picked yes. up a big 4-1 win 
to uh, to win two of the three on this road trip. Uh, Jeff Mallott, you don't think he's uh, paying attention to the fact that Kevin Stenland just got uh, called up. He scored two goals, his ninth and tenth goals of the season. His uh, I think the second goal was the the game winner. No, sorry, Dominic Cotonato, actually. His first goal with the Moose this season, that turned out to be the game winner to give the Moose a 2-1 lead after Jeff Mallott had tied it. Jeff Mallott added some insurance to make it 3-1, and then Leon Gavanke, the 2017 fifth rounder of the Jets, he scored into the empty net to make it 4-1, and the Moose will go for the sweep against the Calgary Wranglers on Thursday night. So I'll be doing double duty again. And Tico Napoli, I don't know if you're still here, but I'll be paying attention to the Tyrell Bauer fight apparently at center ice. People go crazy for that. He was, what, is he the 2020, 2020 seventh rounder? Sixth the rounder, yeah, sixth or seventh. Yeah, I think he was a seventh rounder. I just don't remember the year. I think it was Or Seattle T-Bird. That's correct, yes. So uh, anyways, so that's, that's a quick synopsis of what was happening with the Moose. But of course, more on the Moose in tomorrow's morning papers. Note two. Or three, we'll see, but probably no two actually. There you go. And the hey, tell Bailey, I and- tell Bailey, I had all I had all the moms of the uh, UM, the University of Minnesota Duluth, were tweeting at me because I made a joke about how when they picked up Kuhlman, they have four guys now: Neil Pionk, Dominic Toninato, uh, Dylan Sandberg, Tony Nato, exactly, Tony Nato, yeah. and yeah. Carson Kuhlman. Listen to Bailey. Uh, you got to listen know, to trying, Bailey. I'm she's trying. she's the IC intern. But then Why I had the I had tweeting at you I, because Dominic Cotonato's mom tweeted at me saying, "And we're all great friends." And then and then Dylan Sandberg's mom tweeted at me. I, I, well, I tweeted at Dominic Cotonato's mom saying something about you know something about their their connectivity. So uh, the, Drew, I had Dave is very tweet. big among the Jets players' moms. He's huge. Well, if you do, if you, and in fact, I somehow if, I see this ending in a scandal already. No, Eddie. no. If, if if you remember, Dylan Sandberg's mom uh-huh. watched the Moose end of season roundtable two years ago when Dylan Sandberg was talking about going on a fishing trip with his dad to Lake of the Woods. And he, I said, is your, and his mom was in the chat and she said, I said, are you taking your mom? He said, no, but the next time I talked to him last summer, he took his mom to Lake of the Woods. See, this is what we do. For Dude, Dave needs to just move to Duluth at this point. <laughs> I'm not I sure actually, what, I'm I will not say sure what Duluth he is a, do. He needs to do something. I'm really not sure what it is though. I will say Duluth is very, uh, it's a nice little picturesque town right on the, uh, Right on, is it, which which lake is it? Is it Lake, lake Superior. Superior? Yeah, right yeah. on top of Lake Superior. But it's high, though. So when you kind of enter it, you kind of get up high, and then you kind of, then you go down to the water. Very pretty little town. Okay, well, there you go. Duluth. That's that Dave Manuk's geography lesson, his Manuk Moose Minute, uh, his update on the mums of the, of the Minnesota Duluth Bulldogs. See, Bailey's loving this here. Come on, Drew. You are a man of many, many talents, Mr. Dave. If you haven't already done so, folks, smash the like button. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Tell your friends, tell your family the best place to be after each and every Winnipeg Jets game. And again on Saturday mornings is here on the Illegal Curve YouTube channel. Leave us some feedback on our iTunes page. Leave us some feedback on YouTube. Do all these things. You get extra bonus points in the Illegal Curve merchandise contest. Until Thursday night at 9.45 p.m., Dave Manuk's in the top right. Ezra Ginsberg's in the bottom middle, and I'm your host, Drew Mandel. Thanks for watching the Illegal Curve Post Game Show. We're live on YouTube and all of our social media platforms. Thanks for listening to this broadcast from Illegal Curve Hockey. For more great Illegal Curve content, subscribe to the Illegal Curve YouTube channel, follow at Illegal Curve on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and visit your online home for hockey in Winnipeg, IllegalCurve.com.